All right, so this tutorial is going to go through some basic Grasshopper techniques that you guys can use to extract information and also build content onto your guys' models. Um, and we're going to use Grasshopper to do this. And I just want to sort of give you guys a... Um, the, nothing in here is overly complex, but uh, you do need to make sure that things are oriented properly. So the first thing I've done is I took the points that I had previously developed for Whitney's piece and for a lot of your guys' pieces. Um, and I rotated them on their back so that uh, they are facing upward. And I had to do two things with this. Um, the first thing I had to do was I had to separate uh, the front half from the back half in terms of my point collection. And so what I did is I actually uh, set those on layers. And so if I come over here and try and select all this, you can see how this is working. Okay. And so I have two halves now. Uh, and the reason for that is in order to run the Delaunay um, mesh generator, it operates in a planar scheme. So whatever the construction plane is, um, it's going to do that. It needs to be oriented in that way. Uh, so you can't have a ton of overlapping points. Uh, otherwise, it will try and connect in between them and give you a really big mess. Uh, and so what we need to do then is if we I'll just turn off the previews on these. is this will, you'll see the first set of points and then the second set of points, okay? And then I run a Delaunay mesh component. And so if we pull this down right here, and click, and just drop it in. You set the points, plug that in directly into it. You shouldn't need to do anything. Um, and you'll note that here's the plane that is noted here that it's gonna use the world X, Y coordinates uh, to do this. And that's why you need this because the plan is the world and x, x y this is the cartesian coordinate system right okay and then from there i use the mesh explode component so that i can actually uh, break apart this into its constituent parts and then i bake that out okay and so what i got out of this was this and so then i started to come in here and do some cleanup uh, i had some extra meshes that i didn't need so i could come in here and uh, delete those away just to start to do some trim and cleanup. You'll note that there are still some issues in here. I didn't do, like I, I imagine you guys will do uh, probably a better job of cleaning this up. Um, but what you can do is instead of creating a point grid like I did uh, previously, you can use this technique to just project points. So if you guys had some kind of uh, tessellating pattern that you wanted to draw manually, uh, you could draw those points on there, tessellate that, and then this uh, action would give you the mesh data that you need. Okay, uh, from there, we can't do much with meshes, uh, but luckily we don't have that many of them. There's only 1,600 roughly. Um, so if you run the mesh to nerve command, that will take all the meshes and convert them into nerve surfaces. So now that's a surface we can do a lot more with, and that's a mesh, right? And so we can take these guys, join them together. We still should have two halves, right? Because these things were never connected. Um, you can either build this out manually just by drawing surfaces, or you can um, contour and then connect those, uh, whatever you think. But I'm going to undo that so I have a little bit less uh, geometry floating around in here. And then from there, what I did is I also I did some further trimming out uh, of this, and that enabled me to uh, get something that I could contour again. So uh, I did a contour command, and you can see where some of this stuff would need to be cleaned up. Uh, it's not really usable in terms of developing good lofts. Uh, but then I went in here and I rebuilt these, at least the front face of this. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and lock these because I'm not going to use that. I'm not developing something for the head. But then I can come in here and if I loft this, you can see that I created this. And I still have some other issues in here where I didn't do necessarily the best job of trimming these curves at the back. And so that's something else that you, I would recommend that you guys consider as you're going through this. And the way that we can do that, actually, I'm just going to... So I'm going to disable my object snaps, and then I'm going to come in here and... Mirror, and I'll just pick that. 
by type extrude curve. I can come in here and I'll select these curves and I will split with these two surfaces. Alright, and then I should be able to come over here now and just delete out the stuff I don't want. And I'll just delete those away too. Alright, and so you can see now that I have, if I was trying to get a region to get a nice consistent law, I now have that. Okay? And so from there, what we can do is, if we copy that away, so this is the piece that we want to develop as a textile for right now. We can now plug in another grasshopper definition that I used previously, surface map. And so if I come in here, right click, I set that as my surface. And then I've gone over here, uh, something happened when I was going through this. This reacts to surface direction. So right now it's pointing inward, which isn't really ideal. Uh, you can uh, flip that. And so this registers. Flip, enter. All right, if you flip that, then it'll project on the outside of this. Now, this is going to be rebuilding this. Um, and you can see this is still a little bit wonky, so I'm gonna actually I'm gonna do one last guy here. I'm gonna rebuild this one more time. And not still not the best surface, but okay. And so now I can set my tile component for it for this, and I have done something really clunky, um, but I'll just do this so we can get a sense of how this might work. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to draw a three-dimensional object, um, and for this, I'm just going to use, set, use this as my actual boundary object. So what I'll do is when I pull grasshopper, I'm going to set this as my boundary representation, prep, and I'm going to set this also as my bounding box. So what we should see now is an array of these disks. Hide that out. That have been tiled across the surface. Okay, so we had to just you just have to design one tile and then it will mesh that across there. Now you can do this with surfaces as well. Bearing in mind that you have to think about how these things connect. So say you wanted to go like this. We could set that one surface as our brep. And you can see that that's going to update there. Now, as you go through this, you note that that may not be the orientation we wanted or initially had anticipated when you were going through this. So we rotate the object. The tile will also update and rotate as well. Okay. And then so from there, you can see we have overlap in good good overlap here. So if we wanted to come in and, and I'll turn off my grid snap. Split with this. So I split that out and it, it dropped out because I edited the surface. It's no longer the same. So I just have to reset that boundary representation. And if we, oh, I'm gonna just go ahead and bake this out so my zoom window works. If you don't have, this isn't actually existing, so it does, Rhino won't trigger um, reacting to that surface as we do it. So go ahead and just bake that out.
So now there's a hole on each one of these guys. So if we wanted to set up some kind of stitching pattern um, with these components, we could do that. And then what we can do, and I would suggest being careful with this, let's see if this works. We can unroll these surfaces, and I think we're going to go for labels. And let's see. Oh. It apparently is going to ask us to do this individually. There's probably a script out there you can do this, but this will unroll it so that you can essentially do a flat. Uh, on these guys. There's three points, so it's still a planar surface. So it's not really unrolling anything, but this will give you the move that you need, and then you can see that sort of deformed guy. Okay. All right, and so that would be one way you could use this, uh, with some of the stuff to develop some of the materials here. And you can do the same thing for the backside. You have to do them separately, though. All right.